Now for the accordion folder. We have all the measurements and panels and templates that you need for two sizes of accordion folder. This is the accordion folder that is nine inch wide. So a large one, but I'm going to show you how to make the small one. This will be six and a half inch wide. Now, there are only a few really pretty designed pieces here. And these are the elements that go on the visible parts of the accordion folder. But the majority of the craft project is a lot of construction. I like my accordion folders to be sturdy and long lasting. And that's why it's not going to be something flimsy that's put together really quickly. So the first thing you will need is the base and that are quite a few cardboard pieces. Now there's two types of cardboard pieces, these ones and these ones. These are all going to be six and a half inch wide and these are the outside of this folder and these are a bit smaller and these will be the dividers. Now this for these I would love to use sturdy cardboard like one millimeter thick or one sixteenth of an inch. These may be a bit Smaller. I just used what I had left in my cardboard scrap box. So these are a bit lighter cardboard pieces, but also from, look, pudding powder. So it's okay if these are a bit lighter. The next thing you need is something to cover these up. I used quite sturdy paper, so you won't see these images through, but you can use lighter paper as well. For the covers that you will see on the outside, I used this blue. You won't see much, you will only see these sides. And I printed the front and the back and the flap covers on this paper. And for the covers of the dividers, I just used sturdy 160 grams, again, uh, craft paper. I also used craft paper for the sides. It's called an accordion folder for a reason, because these are going to be the accordion bits that hold everything together. For the nine inch accordion folder, these will all be on separate pages because they're a bit larger. And also you will have to print this part twice because of, obviously it's larger as well. And the first thing I'm going to do is, except for this top and bottom piece, cover these all up. This is quite a bit of work. I will show you with one because the rest is completely the same. And it's actually completely the same as I do with the covers of the journals. So it's not very hard, it's just a lot of work. And I'm going to show you with one of the divider pieces. Now these divider pieces, five of the seven out of them meet covers on both sides. So on one page you have the front cover and the back cover. First task is to cut these out. So I cut out the front and the back of one of the dividers. I didn't cut the corners yet. I'm going to do that afterwards. The first thing I'm going to do is put double-sided tape on all the edges and some glue in the center. So, and then carefully put it in the center. There's a rectangle there, so you can really position it right there. And if you don't, <laughs> no worries. Now I'm gonna cut the corners. Gonna cut them a bit less because they're rather wide if you would use very thick cardboard. So make sure there's one millimeter or sixteenth of an inch next to the corner, not too much more. Fold these over. I like to pre-fold these. This. And then add double-sided tape on all of these tabs against the cardboard. It is really just the same as with the cover of one of the journals. Remove the backs and fold over. I like to do the small ones first and the big ones on top. So the result will be very uniform. And 
five of those seven dividers need a back. So same idea, tape on the outside, glue on the inside and glue in the center. There's about three millimeter all around, or uh, one eighth of an inch. So really try to position it in the center. I have a corner here, but I'm going to add a bit of glue there, of course, because I don't want some loose pieces. This. And then position smack in the middle. Like this. So this is one of the dividers. I'm going to prepare all of these and I will be back. It took me half an hour precisely to wrap and cover all these. So to recap, the outside pieces, the front, back and the flap, I've covered in this color. You can choose any colors that you like, by the way. Just go nuts, patterns, I don't know. And I also covered all the dividers and five of them I also gave a back design and two I don't because they don't need to. All right, I'm gonna put these aside for a while and now I'm going to turn these into a cover. So I was smart enough to write on the pieces of cardboard which parts they are. This is the top, this is the bottom. This is clearly the flap. I'm gonna write that on there just to be sure. But yeah, <laughs> I had front and back on these as well, but on the other side, of course, but it's easy. The front is a little bit lower. So this is the front and this is the back. I write it on there for me because I know mistakes are made easily and then you have to start all over if things go wrong. Not with me. I am going to put them in the right order. So I'm gonna start with the front here. Yeah, of course the folder will face this side, but this way it's easier to assemble. So this is the front. Hmm. Then we need the bottom, then the back, and then the top, and then the flap. And to attach these, you need, again, tape that is about two inches wide. I'm going to use this paper packing tape for now. I'm going to cut two pieces of tape that's a bit larger than twice the height. So, so the height one, height two, better too much than not enough. I'm going to assemble the front and the back and the bottom first. Like with the journals, place your tape, sticky side up, place your bottom about in the center, but definitely in the center of this width and as straight as you can do. Okay, because otherwise the result will look... Okay, this one in the middle. I'm going to use this scrap card again. For the gap, I'm going to place it next to this piece of cardboard. I'm going to take the back, place it against this scrap piece and make sure it lines up with the bottom piece. There we go. Let's get this out. Perfect. Then the same on the other side for the front. Yeah, this is exactly the same as you do with a regular journal. Okay, great, happy with that. Again, fold the bottom part up like this. Go in there with a ruler or your nail or ideally a bone folder. Okay, and fold the other part in as well like this. You can make it shorter if you like. And there, the bottom piece of our accordion folder is ready. And now on the back piece, I'm going to attach the top with the flap. Gonna do exactly the same. Put this piece straight 
And in the middle. Yeah, the downside is this tape is a little bit see-through. It doesn't bother me, but if it bothers you, I'd recommend to use um, uh, a less see-through tape, of course. I'll do exactly the same with my scrap piece of cardboard. Line this up and that looks very good. Same on the other side. This. And hello, perfect. Again, fold this over. Okay, now this piece is really a bit too long. I'm gonna cut it like this. And there we have it. This is essentially the base for your accordion folder. See, and everything's going to be in here. And now this I'm going to put aside for a bit. And the next thing I'm going to do is fold these accordion pieces. I already cut them out and I used 160 grams paper for this. Um, I recommend to use sturdy paper for this because this is going to have to hold it all. Don't use regular paper for this. Regular weight paper, I mean. If you don't want to print this, completely fine. You can also just measure this. This is uh, 9 and 3 quarters by uh, 4 inch. Cut two pieces and then just score them every 3 8 of an inch. Easy. So if you have a scoreboard, just keep into place and every three eighths of an inch, there's a fold. Okay, do you see that? I printed this on 98% with my printer and I thought that was the most accurate percentage to get accurate sizes, but you see they're still a bit off. See, I don't end up with uh, exactly 3 8 of an inch fold here. It doesn't matter for this, really. It doesn't matter at all. But it goes to show, please, if you print stuff like this and expect them to be the right size, they are the right size, but your printer doesn't always print exactly at 100%. My boat printers don't. So it's very important to test your printer out which percentage gives the best result before you start printing a lot of beautiful stuff and then the measurements don't match up. Okay, I'm gonna do the same with this one. Oops. Okay, and then just make an accordion. Like you did when you were a kid, in, out, in, out, in, out, or in crafter's language, mountain valley, mountain valley, mountain valley, etc. Very easy. No weird order of, of so many valleys, so many full uh, mountains. Just up, down, up, down, up, down. So now it is time to apply some tape on these. And now the order in which you're going to do that is quite important. Put the tape on the inside of your accordion pieces. So I want this to be the inside. I'm going to stretch it out a little bit. doesn't matter. And I'm going to put some tape on the first one. So these are exactly, as I said, 3 8 of an inch wide. So a piece of 3 8 of an inch fits perfectly. So put some tape on the first piece and then leave three open. One, two, three. I'm going to put some tape all over the next piece. 
and you're going to put tape and leave three pieces in between almost until the end. So I am almost at the end, but if I would leave three pieces open, I would put my next tape here. We're not going to do that. We're going to put the last one on the last one. So at the end, you leave four pieces open. So first tape, three, tape, three, tape, three, tape, three, tape, three, tape, four, tape. And repeat with the other piece. So these both have tapes on them. And now be very careful. Remove the tape that you put on first. So these ones. Not these ones with the four empty pieces, these ones. There. And these pieces we're going to attach to one of the divider pieces that has no back. So, as followed, here's a sticky side. I'm going to put this piece here and I'm going to stick it like this. And I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side, like this. So the tape goes on the piece without the back. Line up perfectly. Okay, so make sure everything sticks like this, this side as well. This piece without the back will be glued inside the cover of the folder. Okay, now remove the next, remove the next two tape pieces, so this one and this one, and glue these two pieces to the back of a divider piece with a back. Okay, I'm gonna put it like this in here. Same one here. So the tape always goes to the back. Use your bone folder or something like a bone folder to every time make a good bond and also do this. All right, next ones. Remove the next two tapes, so this one and this one. And repeat with the divider. And keep doing that until you have used all your pieces with uh, a back, all your divider pieces with a back. This. And every time you attach a divider piece, go like this so it folds like you wanted to. Okay. So, and the last one, remove the tapes as well and take the other piece without the back and glue them on the back. And this piece will also be glued on the cover. like this. And here's your accordion part of the accordion folder. That like this. And yes, this is totally going to fit inside the cover. And to put this piece inside the cover, put some double-sided tape all around the edge of both of the ends and some glue in the middle. And we're going to glue this in here like this. This is how it's going to work. I'm gonna put tape on both sides already because it's going to be hard to put tape on the other side when it's already half in the in the cover. But the glue I'm going to do one by one. So let me remove one side this and because I want a good hold I'm going to use this kind of glue not just the glue stick yeah I have to clean my nozzle I think I'm going
going to glue this on the back first. You can choose whether you glue first on the front of the back. It really doesn't matter. It's what you find the most easy to do. So make sure to leave a three millimeter gap all around that cardboard piece. Three millimeter, eight of an inch. So at the bottom, the top and the sides. All right. Press, 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 press. If your glue doesn't really stick right away, let this dry first, put the book on top. But I'm going to attach the next part as well already. So remove these. A bunch of glue, strong glue. Okay, and then also be very careful to put this in the middle of that cardboard piece. So not entirely to the bottom, but a little bit above. Keep eight of an inch margin. And when you're happy, yay! All right, good job me, if I say it myself. For the closure, I'm going to use two magnets and two washers. I'm going to use washers instead of extra magnets because my magnets are so strong, it's ridiculous. I can't even get them apart properly. But if you have regular strength magnets, I suggest to use four magnets. Two here, two here. I'm going to show you how I attach them. All right, here's one. It's, it is ridiculous how strong these are. And here's the second one. Not overreacting, this is genuine. And these are two washers from the uh, hardware store. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to measure where I want my magnets. I think I'm gonna put my magnets hmm, here and my washers here. I'm gonna put my washers up first and I think I'm gonna put them, um, yeah, one and a half inch from the side here. And I'm gonna use this strong glue to glue them down. You don't have to be very precise. Just make sure they stick. It's handier to put some glue on the cardboard first, so then you don't have to make your fingers dirty. So, okay. These are in here. And now to see where I want my magnets, I'm going to use a simple pen gonna color all over these two washers. Don't worry, you won't see it. They will be covered up. This is kind of a wet pen. And the idea is that I can close it and hopefully mark, like make a stamp where the magnets will be. And it didn't work this time. Normally, this always works, except for now, of course. Well, if it works for you, great. Much easier than what I do, because now I have to actually measure where they're going to come. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> the ink thing always works, but apparently not today. So now I'm gonna put some glue on these spots and attach the magnets. And then let this dry. Do not get tempted to close this because the glue cannot hold it yet. Please don't get tempted. Okay, when these are dry enough so they don't move anymore, add a piece of tape on top just for extra protection doesn't have to be pretty. Just a piece over every of these four elements. Like this. And the last thing to do is to add these panels. I chose this back and front panel and I'm going to choose the upper four panels for the uh, flap and the top. And I'm going to cut these out first. I cut all the panels out and I already put some double-sided tape on all the edges here. 
and they're ready to go. Now make sure that you remember which one is the front and which one is the back. Again, the front is always a little bit lower. And let's start with the front. So I'm going to make sure this sticks. This one as well. I'm going to remove these. Remove these as well. Add some glue in the center. And position it in the center again. So over the magnets, again, there's a one eighth of an inch, three millimeter gap on all sides, like this. And then make sure to put the edges down very well. Don't rub too hard over the magnets. Of course, they will stick, but otherwise you will crease the paper here. It's, of course, it has a bit of volume here. So, and then do the same with the back, the top, the flap, and also the top and the flap on the inside. So, I attached all these panels as I like them to be attached. And now if you close it, it will stay closed thanks to these magnets and the washers. Now, I must say with these super strong magnets and the washers, it closes okay. But if you want to close it very, 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 very well, I would suggest use two magnets because this is the minimum of stick that I want. And here's how to make two sizes of accordion folders. In here you can put cards with buttons and ribbons etc if you like to uh, keep them. And here, as I said, this is large enough to keep some act actual patterns in here. This would be a lovely gift for anyone who's mad about sewing, for sure. If you would like to discover this pack in our shop, or if you would love to see a video that shows you exactly what is in this project pack, I will put those links below also.